Thank you, Michelle, for the introduction. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm GV from uh, the Skylab, University of Sussex. Uh, so today, I would like to, to present, uh, yeah, OK, is it better? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so today, I would like to present our, our work in collaboration with, uh, with Kasper Hornbeck at the uh, University of uh, Copenhagen and, and Sri Ram Subramanian at the University of Sussex uh, about our work of uh, uh, neuro anatomical, uh, an anatomical uh, correlates of uh, perceived usability. Uh, so uh, let, let me start by showing you some, some examples of uh, um, uh, where I con consider a good and, and poor usability uh, in our daily lives. Uh, so, so the first picture here um, uh, is that um, the one taking on t uh, that was taken on a Barcelona Metro. Uh, so it is, it's, I consider it's good design uh, in a way that you can see how many stops uh, are ahead of you, uh, which stop uh, uh, have you passed, and which one is next. So you can you can plan your, your shopper. Uh, but the one on the right here, so uh, it recycle bin, uh, which. Um, as you can see closer with conflicting instruction uh, at, the, at the front and also at the top of the bin. So, so when you open the door, you go in, okay, I want to recycle a can or a bottle. You go in, or you say, that's impossible on the left, you have to go on the right. Um, so uh, another exa example that was taken recently um, on our uh, exploration around Quebec City. Uh, so, so this is a map that, we, uh, that was taken on uh, the plains of uh, Abraham. Uh, uh, so, so we were at the top of, uh, of this place, and interestingly, uh, four of us, including two PhD holders and two PhD students, could not figure out where were we and how do we get around <laughs> by looking at this map for five minutes. Um, so, so what we were looking probably was something like, like this map uh, with a clear indication of, oh, you are here. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, those are the examples to, to show that usability is an in, in important aspect in our daily lives, and of course, in, in HCI. Uh, but first, um, uh, let, let's uh, uh, look into what, what is usability. So, so um, according to, to Merriam-Webster dictionary, usability is the ease of use and, and learnability of a human-made object, uh, such as uh, a tool or a device. Uh, but uh, Jacob Jensen, Define usability in his book is like uh, usability is a quality attribute that assesses how easy user interfaces are to use. Uh, but also, the, the International uh, Standards Organization ISO uh, define usability with a concern uh, of the ease, uh, effectiveness, uh, uh, and satisfaction with which uh, users achieve their goals uh, when interacting with it. Uh, so, these are slightly different definitions of usability which do not give a, a clear. Um, construct of usability, uh, but also another key remain question is that uh, uh, on, on the relationship between uh, aesthetic, which is beauty, uh, uh, and usability is, is well researched, uh, uh, but um, but it still remain the question of what is usability, uh, uh, what is beautiful, is also perceived as as usable or not. Uh, or whether how in immediate impressions uh, of aesthetic influence the subsequent uh, performance and assessment of usability. Okay, uh, so uh, to, to answer uh, those questions, we first look looking, uh, we first look at how to, to measure usability first. Okay, uh, so, so currently there can be, uh, the, the method to measure usability can be categorized into two methods. Uh, is it subjective uh, or objective? So uh, subjective measure of usability uh, um, uh, can be seen in the forms of questionnaires such as uh, attractive two or in uh, the user experience questionnaires. Uh, but uh, objective measure of usability um, uh, can, be, uh, can include the physiological signals um, measurements such as uh, the uh, functional near infrared spectroscopy, FNIS, uh, in usability uh, testing such as like HEO and BOHEO, uh, or in um, uh, adaptive interface such as in, in Hertzfield, or um, another example is in, in Lukanov et al. Uh, to understand the effect of, of waveform layout uh, on, on metal workload. Okay, uh, but in, in our study, we use different technique, which is uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI. Um, so, so let me first uh, explain the technique briefly first. Uh, so, so fMRI measure um, uh, brain activity by, by detecting the change in, in blood flow. Uh, so the most common approach uh, 
in fMRI is using the is, is using the bow contrast, uh, which stands for the blood oxygenation level dependence. Uh, so 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 bow measures the ratio of oxy and deoxy hemoglobin in the blood. Uh, so it does not directly um, measure the neuron neuron activities. Uh, however, it does measure the metabolic demands of the neurons. Uh, so it can let you to construct the the structure of the brain or function of the brain. So, so by uh, constructing image, uh, images from fMRI during the performance of, of different tasks, uh, it can reflect part, uh, parts of the brain, which one and, uh, that are active, which ones are not active, and, and can reveal the brain structures that are activated together. Uh, so, so these techniques uh, provide much higher um, uh, spatial resolution and, and more accurate activation localization compared to, to the other techniques such as uh, EEG and, and apneas. Um, so fMRI has been used uh, widely in the literature, uh, such as to study uh, aesthetics. Um, uh, so you can see example uh, like uh, investigating the correlates of um, uh, investigating uh, the brain activation area when viewing different type of faces or the attractiveness of faces with, with eye contact and also uh, aesthetics of, of painting. Uh, however, why uh, it is well researched on, on aesthetic here is there's no previous uh, study that investigates the, the construct of usability uh, or perceived usability using, using fMRI. Um, okay, so, so this technique um, uh, in the field of HCI, it is not, not a new technique um, to understand what is going on when, uh, when user, uh, users, uh, in the user's brain uh, during a certain interaction or performance. Uh, so some example can be seen in, in previous work uh, in the field of HCI is um, in, in Python, such as um, uh, where they analyze the brain area activated uh, during the, the performance of a navigation task. Um, or another study, uh, Baumgartner et al. Uh, studies the experience of a presence during uh, a performance, uh, during a video of a, a virtual experience. Uh, or Clement et al. Um, using uh, use fMRI uh, to investigate the sense of presence uh, during a, a VR-free navigation task. Or also, um, uh, Anderson and use MMI to, to study user habituation uh, to, to security warnings. So, so in our study, we, we use uh, MMI technique uh, uh, with the aim to answer the, the research question of uh, what is uh, the neuroanatomically of uh, correlates of, of usability and whether the overlap between usability and aesthetic exists and by how much. Okay. So, so that's why in our first experiment, um, uh, we collected 400 uh, static uh, web pages, uh, ranging from low to high beauty and also low to high usability. Uh, um, so, so we use these 400 web pages to, uh, to uh, give to, um, to people on a Cloudflower um, website to read, and 492 people rated uh, this website, which read about 5 to 15 web pages. Um, so um, based on the results, we selected uh, 25 web pages uh, of each level, uh, beauty, such as low, medium, and high, and we do the same for usability. So we have, for each um, category, we have three levels. Okay? So uh, these stimuli were then used for participants to view and read in the, the FMI machine. As you can see here is a procedure of a trial. Uh, so, so in one trial, uh, participant first uh, see eight to 10 seconds of crosshair. Uh, this is followed by viewing uh, the, the web page stimuli for five seconds, uh, and then followed by three seconds, and then at the end, uh, participants uh, uh, will be asked to rate the stimuli of how beauty it is or how usable it is. Uh, this is repeated for, for own trials in, in one group, which is 75 stimuli first, before they move to, um, to the, another group. Uh, so if they do beauty first, they do usability next, and the order is counterbalanced between participants. Okay. Um, <coughs> So um, we, we then look at the result of activated brain areas um, uh, specifically to, to aesthetic and usability. Uh, and in terms of aesthetic, we found brain area activated uh, uh, in our study here is um, are in line with those found in, in non-web page stimuli. Uh, so for instance, we, we observe strong activation in, in part of the brain, uh, suggesting that people read the perceived aesthetic uh, of web page similarly to, to the picture and, and architecture stimuli. Uh, so, so this may be because most web pages um, include commodity design elements such as uh, columns, uh, frames, or, or headings. So these commodity design elements add architecture features uh, to the static web page, thus capturing uh, users' attention. Okay? Uh, 
so we, we also found that uh, the activation in, in parts of the brain are similar to previous study um, uh, demonstrating baby schema, uh, suggesting that participants may perceive the feature of the web page as Q uh, or motivating a sense of caretaking in the subjects. <coughs> so um, we also found activation uh, with um, um, uh, that success, that perceived aesthetic of the web page are also judged based on the visual aesthetic perception. So although a web page is a, a complex stimuli, people still judge it the same way or similar way as a simple one, a simple stimuli. Uh, but interestingly, in terms of uh, perceived usability, uh, we found the brain area specific to usability uh, were, uh, uh, were found in the um, several motor, uh, premotor areas, uh, which are associated with, with planning complex movements uh, so our results, uh, this result suggests uh, that the process of uh, planning to use a web page and, and self-reflection on how to use a web page was stimulated when people um, assessing the usability. Uh, we, we also found that uh, usability was related to, to the activation of the brain parts uh, that often related to, to linguistic processing and, and reading. Uh, uh, in some studies, they have been, uh, these areas have, been, have also been uh, implicated in, in higher order expectancy and utility. So, so this suggests that um, even if the web page is only viewed for, for five seconds, uh, users look at the quality of the headings uh, in the web page when, when perceived usability and judge them. Okay. Um, so, so we also found that the, uh, the increase in, in usability activated the somatosensory cortex, which normally associate with our sense of touch. Um, so this has been seen in the process of observing um, touch action, which is kind of mirror effect. You, you see uh, other people perform the touch action, you have the same effect in your brain. Uh, so uh, this, this result suggests that, that because, maybe because nowadays people normally uh, view web page uh, on a touch based device, uh, so which might lead to participants assess the usability of a web page by asking themselves, uh, what happened if I go there? Is it by touching it? So when they, they view the web page. Okay. Uh, uh, finally, we found the, the brain activation uh, in the part where, uh, uh, which is related to emotion uh, and specifically to usability. Uh, this suggests that the, the effect, effective influence of a web page is a, a key factor in, in perceived usability. Okay. Um, so, uh, in, ex in, in, in the first experiment, we use a static web page uh, as stimuli. Um, however, in, in the literature uh, that have shown that uh, the measures of uh, aesthetics and usability are often strong correlated uh, at, the, at the time of initial exposure when you're first seeing it, um, but it is less correlated, or maybe not at all, uh, after interaction with the interface. Okay. Uh, so, so that's why in, in our um, why, why in the first study we present initial data on the association between uh, activation of the brain networks and usability um, and aesthetic ratings, uh, these relationships may differ in interactive system. So, so that's why in, in experiment two we added uh, dynamic elements uh, to the stimuli, uh, but in very simple um, forms such as you can see here is a scroll down the web page and click on one link to navigate to another one. So, so we, um, uh, we added uh, these dynamics to the stimuli and we performed the same experimental protocol in the, in the second study. Uh, so uh, the result that we found uh, in, in this um, experiment is that showing that uh, uh, in terms of uh, perceived aesthetic, uh, the, the brain area activated uh, are in line with previous studies shown in uh, like uh, uh, cartoons or story comprehension involving animation stimuli. Uh, but interestingly, for, for perceived usability, we found activation in the brain area um, in the primary motor cortex, okay? uh, which control all our voluntary movements. So, so this, this result suggests that perceived usability is somewhat more related to, to action uh, as compared to perceived uh, aesthetic. Okay? Um, so, okay, so let, let me make a quick summary. The, uh, the key point you'll take away from, from, my, uh, from our work uh, is that um, uh, perceived usability has, has a brain basis that differs from, from that of a perceived aesthetic. So here we identify four key points, um, uh, four key connections uh, between the brain and perceived usability. Uh, so the first point is that our findings suggest that emotion um, does indeed play a key part uh, in, in uh, perceived usability. Uh, and the findings from our first experiment uh, suggest that the anticipation of physical interaction is an important part 
uh, perceived usability. Uh, also, in our, our second experiment uh, success, that's the interaction depicted in, in video, check a higher anticipation uh, of interaction with the web page. Okay. Uh, so uh, the third key point is that the area activated uh, specifically to, uh, uh, to, uh, for perception of usability is related to, to task intention, uh, like the example I, I mentioned is what happened in my talk, the way to touch there. Uh, and also, the fourth point is that usability has uh, element um, of high order thinking, such as uh, linguistic processing, uh, categorization, and rational thought. Uh, so even without the opportunity to interact, because people would lie down in the MMM machine, they could not interact with the web page directly, uh, people still attempt to, to uh, categorize and recognize navigation options for, for the web page that are being shown. Okay. Uh, also, we, we also found the overlaps uh, of the brain activation area between usability and aesthetic. So, so we, we think there are two possible explanations for this. Uh, so this result may suggest that user um, assess some components of perceived ability by substituting uh, an assessment of perceived aesthetic. Uh, but also, on the other hand, perceived aesthetics may, may form part of perceived usability, uh, leading to the overlap between these areas. Uh, with this, I, I want to conclude uh, my talk today. Uh, and my, my co-author, Casper, is looking for a postdoc, so please contact him if you're interested. Thank you. Okay. So I have a, a quick question. Yes. So I find this uh, study fascinating. Um, especially the idea that when you look at a page, uh, you have signs of the intention of action with that page. Yes. Now, how do you think, uh, I know in an fMRI uh, setup, it's very hard to, to let users do very much. Yes. But how do you think it would be different if you let the users actually interact with the page as opposed to watch an interaction or imagine an interaction? Uh, yes. So. so uh Although, so that's just one direction of our next, uh, our, our future work where we, we imagine that our works like we, um, we monitor their brain while let them interact with the, the, the web page, for example, and see what's going on in, in there. But obviously that's, that's one direction uh, of the, the future work here where we see the, the change in real time of the brain activation in that particular area. So, so in, our, in, our, uh, in our work here, we just identify here's the area to look at uh, during the usability assessment. But now we know it is, uh, so when we, we manipulate the level of usability, for example, like let them interact with it, we can see how it changes in real time. But that's, that's obviously a good suggestion, yes. And, and are you uh, meaning to test some hypothesis? Uh, I mean, you know, the whole debate about affordances versus uh, signifiers, the fact that, you know, a capability is there but is not perceived or is perceived, um, or other theories uh, uh, of, of human action with, with tool-mediated action. Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, I, I didn't see a reference to theory uh, uh, that are related to, to human uh, behavior there. So, so are you asking like? Well, so uh, to me the question is really, uh, do you have theories of uh, human interaction that ground the work or are you just, just observing the difference between uh, you know, different types of pages. <laughs> yeah. So, so in here, we, we try to, to, to end the debate, actually, like, what is the, the relationship between usability and beauty? We, um, and and we, we, we answer it, right? Uh, but we, we did not, like, manipulate the, the usability or look at different people's behavior. Uh, but that's, that's probably the, for the future. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Still.